what's up welcome back this video is going to be a story about Teresa Noor who is just a terrible person now if you hear some crunching in the background I apologize for that up front I had to give blue a bone to have him leave me alone so I can film and so he is right over there on the floor crunching So Teresa Noor was the second born of four children. She was raised in a household with both her parents. See, so don't feel bad if your child is being raised by just one parent because apparently two parent households ain't turning out the best kids either. When Teresa was about 14, her father was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So he had to quit his job and that really messed with him. So he became very abusive, but not towards the mother, I guess because he needed her to keep working and bring in that bacon since he couldn't anymore, you know. Instead, he started taking out a lot of his frustrations on the kids and obviously Teresa became very much attached to her mother because apparently that was the only parent she had that was worth more than two dead flies smashed. But unfortunately for Teresa, while walking to the store with her mother at the age of 15, she suffers a heart attack and literally dies in little Teresa's arms. And this is very, very devastating for her. So now she's left with her father, who's, you know, abusive. And he is struggling to take care of them because he's left with four kids and he can't work. And his wife was bringing in the money and she is now deceased. Desperate to get just out of her household and her current situation with her father, she drops out of high school and marries very young a man that is 21 this is back in like I guess the 50s so I don't know I guess that was a thing and it was okay she was very controlling of her husband even though he was five years older than her she was pretty much just trying to run it and he did not like it but they did produce a child and when she was pregnant with the second with their second child it just became too much for him and he was just like you know what i'm leaving i can't take this anymore i can't do this with you anymore and when he turns to leave she shoots him in the back with a rifle killing him because she was pregnant and she just looked so innocent and sweet and she claimed self-defense she was acquitted of all charges and she did not spend any time behind bars she was instead looked at like this this little victim that had just just couldn't you know take it anymore and just had to defend herself against her abusive husband shortly after she gives birth to their daughter at the age of 20 Teresa marries husband number two she's also very controlling to him she's just you know a bitch to say the least they actually have four kids so now the count is up to six and he decides you know he can't take this shit anymore but it was easier for him to get out because I think he was in the military so he actually you know he just left her ass behind with the kids and um, went on to live his life his best life I'm drinking wine and it's Sunday morning so we'll just pretend that this is um what is it called when you eat the little cracker I don't know why commissary is coming to my mind I'm such a heathen like that's something to do with jail and I'm trying to think of something that has something to do with religion we'll just pretend this is Jesus juice you know anyway she marries two more times after that and both marriages go the same she is insane controlling they get sick of her shit and they leave her she didn't manage to kill anybody else which is good well any of her husbands i guess she gets to a point where she can no longer convince anybody to just marry her and she's just stuck at the house with these six kids she, she became very abusive to them and she would often tell them that, you know, she didn't want them. She was stuck with them. <sighs> and 
And since she was, they would have to pay because she was stuck with them and didn't want to be. She would often pick one to like really be and she would force the other five to hold that one down. And if they like let go or if they lost their grip, then they would be next up for a beating. She had this big wood plank that she had taken from a construction site that she called the Board of Education that she would use to beat the kids. The children were not allowed to visit anybody else's home. They weren't, of course, allowed to have company because she didn't want nobody around while she was doing all these horrible things to them. So really, the kids kind of grew up thinking that what they went through with their mother Granted, they didn't like it, but they thought it was normal because they didn't have any any other examples of a family dynamic to compare it to. As far as they knew, this was how everyone was living. Every time I'm doing a video and I am filling in my brows, I think of how my sister is like, you hold your brush so ugly. And then I just want to look at the camera and go, I know you watch it. So that one, that's for you. As the children grew older, Teresa became very paranoid that they were demons, like demon possessed and out to get her. So she would wake them up. She thought that w while she slept at night, they were pretending to sleep and like plotting against her. So she would go get all of them out of bed, bring them down to the living room and make them sit on their knees facing away from her and staying awake literally all night long on their knees to keep an eye on them. If they will fall asleep or not off, she would hit them with this board of education she used. And they would have to stay like that until the sun came up. When the sun came up, she would tell them that the demons had left them and that it was okay for them to then either go to school or go to bed if it was a weekend she was just ins insane so she would do that quite often and yeah one night she came home drunk from the bar and she got all of the kids out of bed brought them downstairs and she was excited like it's rare that the kids ever saw her happy but this particular night mother was excited and she explained to the kids how she was at the bar and she learned how to throw darts and this guy came in and he instead of throwing darts pulled out a set of knives and he was throwing knives and he taught her and she was just so good at it like she just was so good she wanted to show them her newfound skills and talents and instead of using a dartboard, she wanted to use the children. One by one, she wanted them to stand with their backs against the wall and allow her to throw knives their way. And because she was so good, they had nothing to worry about because she wouldn't miss. I mean, she would miss. So her first son, William, goes and puts his little back against the wall and she tosses the first knife and misses barely he takes off running because he is literally petrified and so he's like i gotta get out of here next she called her daughter sheila to the wall she tosses the knife and unfortunately this time she is not so lucky and the knife penetrates sheila Teresa becomes like enraged she is pissed she goes onto a rant she is accusing sheila of moving and making her stab her on purpose and she's just upset that you know not that her child is bleeding and stabbed with a knife she's pissed because her skills looked off and she had already bragged on herself so yeah she doesn't get little Sheila any medical attention. Instead, she just goes and gets some butterfly bandages and some gauze and she closes her up and sends all of the kids to bed. So Susan, the oldest daughter, one day decides she is just sick of the shits and she's going to run away. Uh, about mid afternoon, she realizes Susan is missing she's asking all the kids like where is she have you seen her the kids are like no i don't know where she is and 
Susan is missing for a couple days. She turns up with CPS. They interview all of the children one by one individually because Susan, of course, had told them about the abuse that they had suffered at the hands of their psychotic mother. But the crazy thing is they interviewed them each along with Teresa. So they're asking the children, like, has your mother ever hurt you? Have you witnessed her hurt any of your siblings? And Teresa's bald-headed ass is standing in the background, like, like telling them, you know, like, you know, you know the mama look like giving them the mother look like motherfucker, you better not blow this. And so, of course, the kids are afraid in the presence of their psychotic mother, which I just don't get for the life of me. Like, some kids may, you know, take that as an opportunity and be like, yes, this bitch be hitting me. But more often than not, I would think that kids would do just as these kids did and be just too afraid to say anything. So after the kids are interviewed and none of them blow the whistle child protective services just mark susan as a runaway and they don't do anything else they return her to the household say she, you know she's just being a troubled teen and she's run away and there's no harm no foul here now of course Teresa is not going to allow susan to just come back into the house she has to be punished for her betrayal which is what crazy is Teresa saw her act as she takes Susan and handcuffs her underneath the table of the dining room where they sat for dinner well first she beat her of course she administered her her beating and then she handcuffed Susan underneath this table where she left her handcuffed for the next couple years she would force feed her and oftentimes past the point of Susan explaining to her or, you know, expressing that she was full, which would then cause her to vomit. And then she will force her to also eat the vomit. She also had her ball gagged. So the only time she wasn't gagged is when she was eating. This scared the other children into silence, like even further. They already were afraid to speak up, but if nothing else made them feel like speaking up was not the right thing or the safe thing to do, this definitely did. And that was her point of doing this, like to just show them, if you try that shit, this will happen to you or maybe something even worse. So as the years go by and the children are getting a little older and Teresa is a little more paranoid, she decides that it's best that she pulls them out of school. She pulls each one of them out, telling the school that she's moving and forces the oldest to start delivering paper newspapers around the neighborhood to bring in some income because she was only getting a little bit of income i think she was on public assistance so she wasn't getting much she refused to give the two oldest that she had working a ride to work instead she would trail them in her car the entire way like <laughs> never once was she say hey you know just hop in rain sleet or snow she is just trailing behind them in her car just to make sure they went to work and didn't try any funny business so one particular morning crazy ass Teresa wakes up in an even worse mood than, than typical than normal she is hitting the children screaming at them and then she turns her fit of rage directly onto Susan and she just zeroes in on her, accusing her of putting spells on her that were making her gain weight. The Twinkie spells. I mean, girl. Okay. She accused her of, you know, casting a spell, making her gain weight out of anger for being tied up under the table. Susan, of course, is like, girl, I did not, okay? I have not. But of course, crazy Teresa wasn't trying to hear it. So she takes Susan from underneath the table and takes a 22 caliber pistol, 
puts it in the hands of the youngest, Terry, which she crazy, her crazy ass named the youngest after herself. So she had a little TJ in the house, little Teresa Jr. But of course, you know, we ain't gonna, but Teresa Jr., you know, she was getting abused just like the rest of them. Anywho, she puts the gun in the hands of the youngest, Teresa, and she points it at Susan and tells Teresa, okay, let me just say Terry so it's no confusion. She instructs Terry to shoot Susan if she moves. She goes to the kitchen to make the rest of the kids breakfast, oatmeal to be specific. And she has the oldest son go to set the table, but he drops the spoons as he's carrying them. And as the noise clanks, it startles Terry and the gun goes off. She accidentally shoots Susan in the abdomen. And Susan hits the floor. Now, you would think that Susan would panic because her daughter's been shot. At this point, we know that she really doesn't give a fuck about the kids. But, I mean, I would think, like, this is pretty drastic. Like, you would think she would at least be afraid that, okay, this is it. Like, how am I going to get out of this? But no. Teresa becomes enraged because Susan dropped near her carpet. And so she is pissed that the blood is almost on her carpet. She runs to get towels to clean the carpet. Meanwhile, Susan is laid out on the floor. She's not screaming. She's like, she's unconscious at this point. Teresa's cleaning up the floor, cleaning up the her beloved carpet. And then she has her sons take. Susan's body to the bathroom and put her in the tub. She does not call 911. She doesn't remove the bullet. She just leaves her there in the tub unconscious. She put gauze over the entry wound. Mind you, the bullet became lodged in Susan's back. So she doesn't attempt to remove the bullet. She just gauzes her up and this time she just uses tape she tapes gauze over the wound and she leaves her in the tub until she wakes up when she wakes up she refuses to give her daughter any pain medicine she says this is not her fault she just leaves her there she instructs her to stay there until she is healed enough to go back underneath the kitchen table so that's where she leaves her for the next month and as soon as she was strong enough or healed enough to go back underneath the table, that's where she went. She just handcuffed her back under the table. And at this point, Susan, of course, is in so much pain and she's just had enough. Like, she just can't take it anymore. She begins to beg every day. Every day, she's like constantly begging to be let go. She says she won't say anything she promises to disappear she won't contact child protective services or the police or anything anymore like she's just like let me go i'll disappear like i won't say anything i won't do anything just let me go she can't take it anymore she just she just can't this goes on for about a year and finally susan decides that she's going to entertain the idea of releasing her under one condition she has to allow her to remove the bullet from her because she said that that would be evidence and that she could not let her go with that evidence. Susan begs like, you know, no, let's just not. Let's just, please just let me go. But of course, Mother Teresa, what are the odds? She is not allowing her daughter to leave there with the bullet. So one day she decides that she's going to perform a little makeshift surgery. She takes Susan from, the, from underneath the table, lays her out on the kitchen floor, and she this time gives her medicine like oh over-the-counter pain medicine and with that and rubbing alcohol she decides she's going to try to perform surgery on her daughter and remove this bullet but mind you the bullet went into her abdomen and of course she hasn't had any kind of x-rays like she doesn't know exactly where this bullet is she's just kind of getting in there and feeling around looking for this 22 caliber bullet of course susan's body goes into shock and she passes out shortly after her mother 
this cutter open and it's just like digging around in there like it's insane and finally she actually removes it like she actually locates it and removes it and when she does she leaves susan laying down the floor unconscious she tells the other kids that when she wakes up and when she heals up she can go she's free to go but she pretty much has to do it on her own like she has to wake up and get up and go on her own after a few days infection starts to set in and susan is in pretty bad shape like her eyes are yellow she's very weak she's barely there she's like in and out of consciousness and then one day she passes out and Teresa tells the children that she's dead they don't know this for sure but they just roll with it she picks Susan up and puts her in the trunk of her car has the kids clean up the mess from the kitchen floor bring everything that ever belonged to Susan to the trunk of the car as well and takes the two oldest boys with her and she tells them that she is planning to just like they have to get rid of her they had thoughts that maybe that Susan really wasn't dead they were too afraid of their mother and just too afraid of the truth to check and see if she really was dead or if she was still alive so they just went with it they got in the car they got to a field and Teresa instructs the boys to take everything out of the car so they're unloading Susan they oh I forgot to mention they really didn't think that she was dead because Teresa had taped her mouth and bound her so it's kind of like if she was dead why would you need to do all of this so anyway fast forward she has them unload Teresa and all of her belongings into the field and when they go back to get into the car or when they turn to go back to the car they're met by Teresa with a gun pointed at them and she has gasoline and matches and she tells them to douse everything in the fuel and to light it and so they go back and they light all of our belongings on fire and she's just like no 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 I said everything including Susan so she forces them i mean at this point she's like if you don't do it i'm gonna kill your ass too and they're afraid so they do it and they just felt terrible because i mean they feel like you know they're really having to burn their sister alive like i guess <sighs> it's crazy 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 when they got back to the house she made it very clear that she didn't want anybody to mention susan at all it was to they were to act as if she never existed and that's what happened it was like she was never there but of course Teresa needs someone to abuse like she needs someone to take her anger out on so she moves her anger and rage toward her other daughter who is the second oldest daughter Sheila Teresa did not want to work and she really needed money she began to force Sheila into prostitution so that they could have money like it's really got to be a special a special section in hell for people who abuse children especially mothers or parents at all who sell their children like really she becomes Sheila's pimp and soon after that she accuses Sheila of becoming pregnant and giving her a STD from the common toilet that they shared so she felt like Sheila must have gotten an STD from one of her johns put it on the toilet seat she sat down to pee and became infected and so she was upset with Sheila and this particular day she gave her a beating way worse than the ones before she not only beat her but she tied her up and put her in a put her in an airless closet without food and water and she left her there where she was knocking on the door and pleading to get out for three days and after the third day like there was no noise and the other kids in the house were kind of suspicious but no one was allowed to open the door and check on her until three days after that and when they do Sheila is dead she puts Sheila into the car and once again she instructs her two sons 
to accompany her to dispose of Sheila's body. And what's crazy is when they pulled over at the site where they planned on dumping Sheila, she had the boys go like check out the scene to make sure it was an area they can dump. And then an officer pulls up. She tells the officer that she just came back from a road trip and it's been a long drive and she just had to pull over to get some rest. And so that's why she was pulled over. He does not realize that this smell is coming from inside her car. Tells her that she should probably pick a different area to rest in because Obviously, a deer or something had been hit and was smelling. She tells him okay, and then, of course, now she fears that if she proceeds to dump her daughter's body in that area, that she will quickly be identified because, of course, a police officer will be like, you know, I stopped that car, I talked to that lady, like he would know that it was her. And so they drive to a different county and dump her body. Like they just pretty much at this point open the door and push her out and leave her literally on the side of the road. And she's discovered like a couple hours later. But because they could not positively identify her or determine her cause of death, she was listed as Jane Doe. She told the boys that because of their involvement, and the dumping and disposing of these bodies that they could never go to the police because they would just be arrested and seen as guilty as well. Like blood is also on their hands. And so of course they're afraid to say anything or fearing that they'll be put away. Eventually though, all of the kids grow up and leave the house. In 1992, the youngest Terry, after watching an episode of America's Most Wanted, is inspired to go tell the story of how it was growing up with Crazy Terry as a mother and what she had done to her sisters. And they were able to confirm the story. And so homegirl Teresa is arrested. One of her sons is already in jail on an unrelated charge. Apparently he grew up to not be shit either because he robbed a store and shot a lady killing her. And so he was serving a life sentence for that the other brother had actually moved out and was making a good life for himself i mean he was still young at the time that they were arrested but he was pretty he wasn't in any trouble that son and teresa shared a courtroom and they were charged with like conspiracy to commit murder and like just as her accomplices like they were willing participants in these acts but when she was brought into the courtroom like he became so visibly shaken disturbed and upset that she, he had to be removed and it became it was very apparent at that point that he was also a victim of his mother like he wasn't some crazy evil cold conspirator but because he had physically participated and not come forward they didn't take his his excuse of you know he tried to say that he never said anything because look at what happened when you did she was killing folk and so he was afraid and that pretty much was his defense which was his truth and which is understandable to me but unfortunately, the brother that was in jail for life received three years for conspiracy, which would run concurrent with his life sentence. So it's kind of like a drop in a bucket for him. Like it's, it's really nothing for him. Other son hadn't gotten to any trouble. He received just probation and mandatory therapy, which he needed, they all need. And then Teresa herself pled out like she pled guilty to avoid the death penalty she took two life sentences that would run consecutively so they wouldn't run concurrent it would be you start one life sentence girl and then here's another one so she's never getting out because she's not even eligible for parole until she is 80 and that's in 2027 that's only in seven years anyway she probably ain't getting that shit because she's evil She's an evil bitch. And that is it for this story. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. 
if you have not. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.